Welcome to Words of Aloha with Pastor Izzy Manzo of Amazing Grace Ministries International. We're headquartered in Kailua Kona on the Big Island of Hawaii. Join us now as we get into God's Word. He says, but in giving this instruction, I do not praise you. Because he said, you guys come together not for better, but for worse. He says, for in the first place, when you come together as a church, I hear that divisions exist amongst you. And I, in part, believe it. (laughs) Paul knew what churches were like. He's like, I heard there's divisions amongst you. Yep, that's not a far stretch. I believe it. He says, but there must also be factions amongst you so that those who are approved may become evident among you. Now, I never thought about this. Why do you got to have people that create factions, you know, divisions, breakaways? Why do, why, you know, to me, I lived in a kind of idealized idea that, hey, once you become a Christian, we're all part of the body of Christ. We're all one big body. Many members, I know every member is different. My toes are different than my fingers. You know, that's different from my shoulder, my collarbone. They're all different parts, but it's still part of the same body. I don't fault that a part is different. It's just a different part. But unfortunately, some people look at, well, you're a different part, so your part shouldn't be anywhere near our part. We should, the twain should never meet. Let's stay away from each other, you know. But we're all one body. And sometimes, you know, like I have an itch on my nose and I need a finger to come in and do this, you know. I mean, if you say no fingers next to the nose, might be picking going on, you know. It's just an itch. You're supposed to be able to have your body parts help the other parts. but, But sometimes factions do happen. People break away and they argue over stuff. And Paul says, actually, here's the reason. So that those that are approved will be evident amongst you. God, God approves of some of the people that, that follow him. There are some that actually aren't following. They're just hanging out for, I don't know. Well, I'm going to show you one reason they hung out. There was, there was hanging out in the church at Corinth for a free meal. I'm, I'm not kidding you. Do you think some people go to churches for a free meal? Come here early, you will see. We feed every week. And not all of them stay. That's okay. The, the meal is given freely in the name of the Lord, in the love of the Lord, just to show that the Lord loves. But, but within the church, when they would have their love feasts, they call them, you know, when people, some churches call it potluck. I'm a little, I don't know why, but in my English understanding, potluck is a scary term. That sounds like you, you're hoping there's a good luck in the pot or something. I don't know. I don't like that. Love feast is agape feast. I like that much better. That sounds good. I'm raised Italian. We like love with our food and eating, and that's all good, but potluck, scary. But anyway, they were having their their meal get-togethers as a church, you know, and they would come together to share their food. And listen to this. Paul said that when they came together, he said, therefore, verse 20, "When when you guys meet together, is it not to eat the Lord's Supper? You know, when you come together, aren't you going to celebrate partaking communion like we are going to do in a minute? He said, but for in your eating, each one takes his own supper first, and, and one is hungry and another is drunk. What? He says, do you not have houses in which to eat and drink? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you, Paul says? I will not praise you in this. Paul is actually saying... Shame, shame, shame. <laughs> you guys come together and they're, y- y- you have houses to eat in. But some of the, some of the folks were going, hey, it's a love feast day. I ain't even going to eat at home. I'm going to let my stomach be really uh, empty so I can pig out when I get to the love feast because it'll be good food. But Paul says that the food that was brought together was there to help who? The poor, the hungry. The church was supposed to be bringing the meal together to be a blessing to, the, to those who had not. And he says, you got your own homes to eat in. Eat at home. Aren't you supposed to be coming for the Lord's Supper? You're supposed to be coming to have the communion part of the thing. But all you're thinking about is the, you know, 
fake stuff that Auntie made, and 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 you're and you're picking out on that, and you just and they were actually in Corinth. They were now we can't imagine that this would ever happen in a church, where some believers would push to the front of the line and eat up all the good stuff before the other guys got up to it, right? Have you ever seen Christians at a buffet? Oh, I'm sorry. At a love feast. Like if you're in the back of the line, you're going, I just hope they don't eat all of Uncle's ribs. He makes the best smoked ribs. I want one, you know, and you're just like, you get up there and there's just, nope, nothing left. But if you're going for the purpose in your mind that I'm going to go to get fed instead of I'm going to help feed those who need food, it's a totally different get-together. If you're bringing the food to sh be shared, especially for those who have not, that's what, that's what the body of Christ is supposed to do. We're supposed to take the blessings, the abundance that God gives us. Freely we receive. What are we supposed to do? Freely what? Give. Not freely get. Oh, man, I'm going to Love Feast so I can get. No, you're supposed to go to Love Feast to give. But they were sinning because they were, and Paul says, I'm, you want me to praise you in this? Forget it. I ain't praising you. You're doing wrong. This is not the church. This is not what we want the church to be marked by, a bunch of covetousness over food, over drink. They were, they were literally going and eating and drinking up like it was a wild party, and then the, the poor that were coming to be ministered to were... They were the ones going, there's nothing left on the plate. And they were hungry. Paul said that's what the love feast was for, was to show the love of God to them. Now, because I was raised in an Italian household, we, it's a little different than I notice American households. My Nona, when she made homemade stuff, we, we all, we, we don't care, we love it. But she makes some lasagna or gnocchi or, you know, just homemade bread. She made homemade bread every day. So I grew up having homemade bread, and um, she make a, you call it um, sauce, sarsa. We, we have, you know, homemade to tomato sauce with garlic and olive oil and just simple, real simple, fresh sauce. And we would make a bowl of sauce and fresh bread, and you just tear off a chunk and dip it in and eat it. And we didn't even have to have pasta. Let me tell you, fresh bread with sauce is just as good as pasta. In fact, I think it's better. You know, we just gobble down a whole loaf and go back and get another bowl and another loaf. And Man, it was so good. I shouldn't talk about food before lunch. This is bad. My mouth is like doing that gleepy thing, you know. And, and I'd be like, but, but when, we, when I was little and small, I would go back for a second loaf and she would look at me and smile. You love me. Oh, I do, Nona. <laughs> and, and it was something about eating the food. And it, like the more you ate, the more you showed you loved her. Even though I was like this, little rail, I could put it away. And when I met my wife, we were in college. We were like this and this. And we go over to her house and we'd start eating. My Nona would be like, boy, they love me. We were starving college students. We could... <laughs> We're like, we love going to Nana's, let's go eat, you know. Well, pig out. But there was a love with the food, you know, and the sharing that gave her great joy to see us eat the food that she prepared that was her way of showing love to us. In the body of Christ, when you share a meal and you show love just to give to someone who doesn't have, you can say, I love you, I love you, I love you with words. But it doesn't speak like it speaks when you say, I love you here. Eat this. I made it for you. I'm just telling you. You don't even need to say I love you. You just say here, have this. Made this. And they know. There's like an unspoken language that transcends cultures and everything. Just to give of a meal shows love. True love. Paul said they were sinning because they were going and gobbling up the meal and not leaving anything for the ones that were poor and hungry. So he, he writes this letter, but he's actually giving them a slap on the hand, you know, so to speak, like, shame on you guys. That's not why you come together. You come together to help the ones who have need. That's what the body's about. Mahalo for joining us. If you'd like more information about us, go to our website, 
AmazingGraceKona.com and click the link to follow us on Facebook. That's AmazingGraceKona.com. Mahalo and God bless.